welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller recruiting in yoga pants. Oh, it's so hot. I think it got up to like 81 degrees today, y'all. <laughs> I got my fan. You remember making paper fans as a kid? Yeah, it's really warm and perfect for today's topic, which is cooling off periods. Y'all asked for it. Okay. <sighs> okay, so I can do this without sweating too much. <laughs> I'm not doing so well so far. Okay, <laughs> so we are going to dig into cooling off periods. What does that even mean? How do I know if I should be in one? And what questions to ask my recruiter to know that I am not wasting my time by continuing to apply for roles for a company that rejected me? We're going to cover all that. Now, Quickly, quick plug for next week, we are actually going to dive into uh, the recruiting process and who all is involved and has responsibility for what when it comes to the recruiting process. I got to tell you, and this may come as a surprise to you, but in a lot of cases, the recruiter is the last one to know that we are going to hire a certain person to do a certain thing. <laughs> So we will dig into that next week, more to come there. We will also probably bitch a lot about the so-called hidden job market that I am not convinced actually exists. So you don't want to miss next week because I'm going to ruffle some feathers. Best believe it. All right. So back to this week, the cooling off period. And Lord, is it warm in here, y'all. Um, <laughs> why do companies have one and how do I know if I'm in one? So we're going to dive into that. I want to give you a couple of um, specific examples of what that might look like. And then I want to finally leave you with a specific question that you can ask your recruiter. So their answer to this will be very telling. <laughs> okay. So let's use my old friends at Google as an example. Google is notorious for um, their cooling off period. I think this is probably not a secret, but let me explain the process and the why behind it. Okay. So the idea behind uh, the cooling off period at Google is because Google is hiring or recruiting, interviewing, interviewing you for the company. So if you're coming in, you know, as an engineer, as a recruiter, as, as whatever, the idea is they're building an interview loop and they're gathering data throughout the interview process that show if you are qualified for the organization. Okay. So it's usually not specific to a critical role. It's not about a particular team. It's about, can this person be a successful engineer at Google? If the answer is yes, cool. You're probably going to end up in like a team match scenario, or maybe you've got up some options of the team you want to join, things like that. Uh, when I interviewed at Google, I already told them like from the start, I want to work for this one team. I like this leader. That is the only reason I would make a change. I like my current job, but I'll go if I get to do this kind of work. And so go through the process and they still come back talking about, congratulations, you made it through hiring committee. Now we're going to set you up with a team match. No, you are not. <laughs> I want to work for this particular leader. I will not consider anything that is not this team. So might have been a little short-sighted on my part, but I did really love my time on this leader's team. So in case you're watching, JJ, just know I still think of you fondly. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, the idea though behind the Google recruiting process is that uh, they are they are interviewing you for the company. If you don't meet the bar, the mythical Google bar, ooh, way up there. Um, if you're not getting an offer after that, if they feel like they didn't get the right signal to say, yeah, we could hire this person, there is a cooling off period. They are not going to re-interview you a week later. Okay. The reason why we want to put some time in between to allow you to grow further in your career, to pick up a new skill, to improve on something that may have been lacking, um, to, to just have an opportunity for us to collect different data. If you 
have, you know, it's like taking your temperature or weighing yourself, okay? If you weigh yourself on a Tuesday and you work really, really, really hard Tuesday night and you get up and weigh yourself again on Wednesday, probably not gonna see a significant difference in the numbers. Am I right? <laughs> I mean, the data is what the data is in that moment. However, if you weigh yourself in February and you work really, really hard and you eat better and you exercise and then you weigh yourself again in May, maybe you'll have a different outcome. I'm just saying. <laughs> so the idea behind the cooling off period is to allow for something to change, basically. I mean, let's just call it what it is. We want an opportunity to collect new data that will be fresh at the time we are gathering it, which is the interview a year from now. Okay, so that's the idea behind a cooling off period. Not every company does this as specifically as Google does. Microsoft is another great example. Um, at least when I recruited there, there there may have been changes since then, I don't know. But I, just a few years back when I was with Microsoft, it was not unusual for a candidate to be rejected for one team on Tuesday and then interviewing with another team on Friday, okay? It didn't happen all the time, but there was definitely an argument to be made that, hey, we have interviewed this person through a very specific lens. We're talking to them about a very specific engineering type role. Uh, for a specific team, not a fit, no real negative signals. Nobody says this person couldn't be great at Microsoft, just not great for this role. And so you might be uh, interviewing with a different team next week and that's okay. So how is a job seeker to know which camp you're in and what kind of company you're dealing with? I'm so glad you asked because I might have an answer. <laughs> so the number one thing that I want you to do Y'all, it is freaking hot in here. Okay, I'm not even playing. <laughs> the fan was supposed to be a cooling off joke, but oh my God, I need it. <sighs> Ugh, okay. Anyway, um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask your recruiter after that conversation. You can even approach this even before the interview if you wanted. Like you can actually kind of dig in like, okay, if this doesn't go well, what happens? You know, it's okay to, to try to get an understanding up front of, of what post-interview life could be like. I, I do try to cover this in my prep calls, so hopefully I'm doing a good job there. I don't know. Um, but let's fast forward. You've done the interview. You are now you know, you're getting the call that, hey, thanks so much for, for taking the time. We're not moving forward with an offer, okay? Bummer, sad face, hate it, least favorite part of my job. I know it's even worse for you guys to hear it. So what do you do next? Ask the recruiter. And this is how I want you to word it. Something like this. Put it in your own words, of course. Does it make sense for me to consider other roles within the company. Does it make sense for me to apply to roles that I'm interested in right now? Do you have a cooling off period? Do I need to wait for six months before I try to interview again? Like it's okay to ask any kind of variation of that question and try to understand, you know, what what's realistic? for me in this situation? What what can I, should I spend my time pursuing this organization right now? Maybe that's no. And, and I get it, like that sucks, especially if it's a huge company and they've got a thousand roles that you could be a fit for. I get it. Nobody wants to hear that they're being put on a shelf for six months. It freaking sucks. But what I don't want is for you to spin up a bunch of activity and waste a bunch of time on a company that needs a bit of a break, okay? And again, it's not personal, it's not because we don't like you, it's because we are collecting data, the data has given us a certain outcome, we need a little room to collect new data in the future, all right? So please think of it in those terms, that is the intention and 
the goal is to get you fast forwarded to a place where you can realistically be reconsidered for a company. I was rejected by my current company three years ago. Thank goodness they gave me another chance <laughs> because I am in my dream job right now. So you will get there too. I am here to help. Send me uh, an update, amy at recruitingandyogapants.com if you wanna have a deeper discussion about this. You can leave a comment down below. I read every single one and don't forget to come back next week because we are talking about who the hell is involved in recruiting anyway. All right. Have a great rest of your weekend and we will see you next week.